Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World where we are in the Baltic Sea. Well, at least on the coast of the Baltic Sea. You can see right out there. I just got here. The Fent just got here. Fresh off the boat. And by subscriber request, I mean basically everybody voted and we ended up in Scandinavia, which the Baltic Sea is on the edge of Scandinavia. Now Scandinavia is made up of three different countries, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden generally those three and uh, well we are not gonna pick one per se you can look at the landscape and determine where you think this might be in Scandinavia <laughs> um, I will uh, I'll refrain from making a specific judgment I think I know where we would be but eh, you can sort that out for yourselves now I am headed over to Nico's farm to try to get this boy sorted out. If you'll recall, Frau B asked me to come to Scandinavia to see if I couldn't get Nico's farm up and running. Nico is her godson and he visited her farm in Ravensburg, got the proverbial wild hair up his backside and decided he wanted a farm too. There are some good looking fields around here. Not very well kept, but they are decent looking fields. This is not bad. And the coastline runs right around here too. Very nice, very nice indeed. Anyway, but the thing is, he didn't do it smartly. He dove in head first and just started throwing money at the problem. I honestly don't know how he got the lenders to uh, give him the money to do everything that he did but unfortunately um, I wish they hadn't because frankly this should be his house coming up here on the left he's really dug a hole for himself and one big part of the problem is is that he's dug such a hole for himself that he's having to work a full-time job plus extra to uh, keep the bank from foreclosing on everything which means he doesn't have any time to work the farm either so the situation is pretty much as follows he's half a million euros in debt half a million this is his farm we're just gonna look around and find out what he's got he spent a lot of money because there's a little bit of everything on here Vaderstadt, looks like a planter and a cedar, a couple of Vultra tractors, we've got a hardy sprayer, we've got a plow. Now Vultra, Hardy, and Vaderstadt are all good Scandinavian brands, if you didn't know that. And look at this funky silo. <laughs> That's different, reminds me of an Ikea, which by the way is also from Scandinavia. At least he's got something here that'll tell us what we've got. And all he has at the moment is seed, lime, fertilizer, a liquid fertilizer, and herbicide. Uh, no crop, no nothing. Look at that monster trailer. A oh, nice Klaus Tucano harvester. Yeah, he, he spent bucks. Schwedemacher. Looks like a Vader stat cultivator yep looks like he's got some mowers here um what is that Kongskilda Kongskilda interesting never seen mowers like that before but that's another Scandinavian brand if I'm not mistaken we've got this big old breed all spreader looks like that's about it and then of course he's got the pigs Frau B had cows he, he couldn't be like her. He's got pigs. So, it looks like they need a little bit of water. We should probably take a look at them and see where we stand on the pigs to get started. It looks like not a small, small batch there. So we've got apparently 84 pigs. Right now they're doing good. Cleanliness, cleanliness is good. Productivity is at 90% but we don't have much food. 
Okay. We don't have much food. We got a lot of pigs. We got to focus on pig food. Now, part of his farm is made up of he sent me a map and I kind of kind of memorized it, but he's got this field here. It's got wheat in it that's ready to harvest. That's good, but it's also not been fertilized and it's got a buttload of weeds in it. <laughs> Great. Um, but the wheat will make pig food, or I mean, we can at least supply the pigs with the wheat. It will partially feed them and keep them from getting too crazy, too off the mark. And then we've got an alfalfa field. Now, I'm not going to let this go to waste. I'm going to plow this field out and put real crop in it, obviously. Um, but I want to harvest this alfalfa first because it is ready to harvest. And that will make us a little bit of money. And you can see we've only got $41,000 to start with. And then across the alfalfa field, he's got a grass field. Nico, why do you have grass and alfalfa? There's there's no point with pigs. This is what you do for cows. Man, this kid really doesn't know what he's doing. Does not know what he's doing at all. Now, stepping out of character for just a minute, I will tell you that we are on hard economic difficulty. In fact, I will show you my settings very quickly so you can see weeds are on hard economic difficulty, slow plant growth, withering off, crop destruction off, plowing on, lime on, helpers buy nothing. So that's where we stand. So it looks like at this point I need to get these fields cleared. That's going to be the first major task. We need the wheat and I need to get this oh, oh. <clears throat> I need to get this wheat out and I need to get this alfalfa and grass picked up because what I'm gonna do is turn those into silage and then sell the silage to the BGA. I think that's gonna be my plan. And the real trick is gonna, well, I'll cross that bridge later. For now, I think I'll give the Fent a break since he's got these lovely vultures sitting over here. I might as well take advantage of them. Especially when it comes to mowing. I've never technically used vultures before, but one thing that I know about them for sure is that they have a very, very tight turn radius on them, which makes them excellent mowing tractors. Because you can just flip right around, do whatever you need to do, and man, he's got this mower wedged in here too. Am I going to be able to get that out? That's the question of the day, isn't it? I have to talk to Frau B about her her godson. <laughs> this guy, I've I've just got here and he's already making my life miserable. There we go. That's a little bit better. <laughs> it is what it is, I reckon. Okay, so we're gonna have to unfold this stuff. That's pretty slick. I like that. Those are some cool mowers, man. Very cool. Oh, that's already unfolded. Good. Fire that up. Fire those up. Drop the nose down. Pull up to about there, drop the rears down, and we are mowing alfalfa. I'm trying not to pick up a bunch of grass along the edge so it doesn't get all mixed together. Now right now all I'm concerned about is the fact that we're paying so much bloody interest on these, or on the loan that Nico has taken out. 
that 500,000 is going to cost us a lot of money in interest. But with that said, I'm not exactly concerned about paying that off first thing. Yes, yes, it's a priority and it has to be a priority, but with that said, we need to spend the money to get this farm fully operational. Now, I'm not seeing too much in the way of equipment that we're missing. That's a bloody good thing. I mean, at least what he bought, he kind of bought right. But, there are going to be a few things we're going to need. Although, I think I already see one thing that we're going to need. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I see one thing that we're going to need. Because these mowers do not produce windrows. You know what that means? That means a wind rower, which I didn't see in any of those barns, did you? I sincerely doubt it. I very much doubt it. So yeah, I'm gonna mow out this alfalfa, I'm gonna collect it up, I'm gonna take it to the BGA, use or borrow their silage clamps turn this into silage you see how quick that vulture turns around I'm gonna do the same with this little grass field over here oh I know something else. well man yeah, we'll cross that bridge because I've got that little grass field over there and I thought about merging these fields but I'm not gonna do that that takes care of the mowing, at least to get us started. Thank goodness for small bloody favors. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, these are nice mowers. They are very nice, and man, they just... They kicked the crap out of this stuff. It did not take long at all. I'm impressed. Very different. Not, not traditional butterfly mowers like I'm used to, but... I'll tell you. i definitely use these again. Absolutely. What were those? The Kong, Kong's Kilda. Kong's Kilda. I have to remember that. Definitely have to remember that. Now, I need to make sure I drop the correct <laughs> implement instead of the one on the front. I need to remove the one on the back. Come on, Sparky, get in there. There we go. Now, while I was mowing the grass, I told you we were missing a piece of equipment, and I called down to the shop here and had them send over what I was going to need. And lo and behold, look at that. They've delivered it for me already. This tractor's way overkill for this piece of equipment, but I don't care. I'm already in it. That's right. We desperately 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 needed a wind rower to collect up all of this junk well at least to rake it up and I got not the smallest because we'd be here all bloody day um, I got a decent sized one but it was one of the cheapest ones they had also which was really what's important to me I wanted cheap and effective because like I said, we don't have a lot of money to play with here. Yeah, old, old Nico wasn't, uh, wasn't very good to us on that front. So I'm hoping we can just ease our way along here, make some nice, neat windrows get all of this grass or actually this is alfalfa the grass is over yonder but get all these nice and neat lined up so that it will be easy to collect because I did notice that he does have a forage wagon over there um, I need to go up to the top of this sorry Nico but I'm gonna be driving through your yard buddy Hey, don't blame me, it's your fault. Yeah, probably about right there. I 
Man, this tractor turns sharp. Really sharp. Oh, I was right to begin with. <laughs> it just dragged me right back over there. Oh, well. Life goes on. Aside from the fact that he clearly doesn't know what he's doing, I do have an issue with what Nico has uh, failed to accomplish here. And the issue is that we are so tight on money getting started that, frankly, I can't afford or take the risk of hiring anybody to help out around here. Not for a good long while. Not until... Um, we have a lot more money in the bank. That means every fart and wrinkle of everything that happens on this farm is going to have to be done by me. Now, normally, I don't care. That's fine. But we are in such dire straits that having a little bit of somebody to help out on occasion would really improve the situation. I just don't see, I don't see it happening, unfortunately. That, my friends, is a problem. This is going to be a massive, massive, massive challenge. And to be completely honest, I'm not sure that I'll be able to accomplish it. I'm genuinely not sure that the, this goal can be accomplished. It's just that dire situation. This place is in bad financial shape. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I will know by the time we're done. Man, look at this bloody trailer he bought. This thing is craziness. Dude, did you really need that much trailer? I don't know. They just said buy a trailer, so I bought a trailer that would hold tall stuff. Okay, okay. <laughs> and yeah, this is me pretending to be him. They said I needed a trailer, so I got a trailer. This is the trailer to end all bloody trailers, let me tell you. It's not just a trailer, either. It's, it's a full-blown auger wagon. This had to cost a fortune. Alright, time to grab a harvester and harvest up some no-fertilized, weed-ridden wheat. I hope there's enough in here to at least keep these pigs going for a little bit. On the plus side, this is a really good-sized field. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty large, actually. Can't quite see the far edge of it over there. It's where those trees are marked. So, with a little bit of luck anyway, we'll get a decent amount of weed off of it. At least enough to keep our pigs going for a while. Keep Nico's pigs going for a while. So, as I said, we are in Scandinavia, which is comprised of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. So, we'll just go through them in alphabetical order. We're going to start with Denmark. How about them apples? Now, Denmark is actually an interesting country. Because there are 5.8 million people in Denmark proper, but they produce enough field, food, <laughs> they produce enough fields, they produce enough food to provide for 15 million people. They are a very productive country. Obviously, a lot of that food is going to be exported. That's what you do when you produce more than you, uh, than you need. You send it to other places that don't produce enough food to support their populations. And the Danish actually um, have kind of broken it down to let people know exactly why they are so productive. One of the reasons they, they believe is because they their farmers are very well educated. They make sure that their farmers know exactly what they're doing, why they're doing it, and how to do it. Um, they're constantly doing research for innovation and things like that to improve their their food production and sustainability practices. They're very focused on sustainable and organic farming. Now, sorry, 
sorry Denmark I'm I'm not going the uh, organic farming route at least not until we are <laughs> making enough money to get get Nico uh, squared away but it is a big deal in Denmark for sustainable organic farming one of the things that they do they they place a big emphasis on co-op cooperatives so farmers and cooperatives work together to provide food to the nation or for export and what this does it it allows for very quick changes if something should happen like if there was a demand change the farmers working with the cooperatives they're going to know up front that oh i don't need wheat this time around we've got a we've got too much wheat um, I should switch my crop to something else things like that or you know if the laws change and farmers have to start working on something else the cooperatives can get that word out very quickly that's a big deal um, and then you know they, they call this the value chain that's what they're talking about they call it the value chain and uh, it also allows more money to go back to the farmers because they're, they're selling directly to co-ops, they're not selling to wholesalers, middlemen, and then, you know, the, the cooperatives provide the, or send the food where it needs to go. So that is, that's actually pretty smart. It's better for the farmers, it's better for the public because, you know, there's less question about where their food is coming from and everybody is doing most things in the same way so Denmark really has a has a handle obviously has a handle on their ability to produce food especially if you know they've got 5.8 million people but they're managing to produce enough to provide for 15 million that's huge oops wrong button there Harv wrong button now one of the big things that um, Denmark has done is that they are really making a push to re reduce the wastage of food. I don't know if you know about this, but a lot of food in, in countries gets just wasted. It's thrown away, um, never gets used, especially, you know, vegetables, uh, if crops aren't sold in time or if they get caught in the weather, they're just wasted. And so Denmark has made a big, big push to reduce food waste, and they've managed to reduce that by 25% in just a five-year period. So that's pretty impressive, too. One of the ways they're doing that is obviously through biogas facilities. You know, you may not know this since we're playing a game, but the, the whole biogas thing is very real in European countries. And those of us who come from the United States we don't really have that here at least not to the extent that you see it in Europe it's very few and far between but a lot of that wasted food is now being turned into energy and if I hit that wrong key one more time I'm gonna slap myself in the head <laughs> but you know when you think about biogas plants that's one of the things Denmark is using to reduce its food waste, and they've done a remarkable job getting it down by 25% that quickly. Now, one of the things that Denmark is particularly known for... Well, there we go, getting all full. I'm going to have to run over and grab the fat. One of the things Denmark is particularly known for is producing pigs. Denmark produces a lot of pigs. In fact, they, they state that Oh, there it is. I can almost see over the wheat. <laughs> um, they are, they, they believe they're globally known for the production of pigs and the processing of pig meat. Not pygmies, pig meat. Oh. Well, that's a drawback to this trailer. Having to run a dolly behind in front of it. Hmm. Maybe someday the farm will grow up enough to uh, to get a truck. Not counting on that anytime soon, that's for sure. 
But yeah, Denmark produces a lot of pigs. Lots of pigs. And of course, you know, I don't know at what point many of you grew up or anything, but uh, back in my day, there used to be a real issue with pork and something called trichinosis. You had to make sure that pork was cooked well. It always had to be cooked well done. It could not be cooked in the, or pink in the middle like a steak. It had to be well done, and that's because there was a concern about people catching trichinosis. And what trichinosis is, is basically undercooked pork would give you worms. How pleasant does that sound? Not pleasant at all. That's not so much an issue in the world anymore. That, that's pretty much been bred out of pigs. So it's not a crisis anymore if you, uh, if you have uh, a little bit of pink in your pork chop. But it used to be. It used to be a big deal, but... Um, you know, Denmark focused very much on food safety when it comes to its pork. And, you know, they don't allow steroids, they don't allow hormones or any other type of growth promotion, stuff like that. Um, they're very aware of any pesticides that could be getting into their pig populations, anything like that. So they are very very focused on producing some of the world's finest pork I personally have never had Danish pork at least not that I know of but um, in my opinion pork is one of the most delicious meats around <laughs> and everybody knows that bacon at least American style bacon whatever you want to call it smoked bacon sliced bacon well, that is the fairy dust of the food world. You can, you can pretty much sprinkle that on anything and it will taste three times better than it did before. It's, it's gotten so bad, actually, that they're putting bacon and ice cream and on donuts. and That's a little bit too much for me. I don't want bacon on my donut. I don't want it in my ice cream. But uh, pretty much anything savory, add a little bacon. You're good to go. Now, Frau B might have wanted to talk to some officials in Denmark when she was, uh, or decided to get her grandparents' dairy farm back up and running. Because, frankly, Denmark seems to be doing it right. They have doubled their milk production in the last 30 years. And that's, that's not by doubling the number of cows. That's by each cow. So each cow has doubled its milk production in the last 30 years. So a cow 30 years ago, if it gave 100 liters of milk, today would give 200 liters of milk. That's impressive. That's very impressive. Impressive. And of course, the Danish insists that, uh, you know, their milk products are some of the highest quality in the world. Which, you know, based on what they're talking about, and I'm not going to say I'm getting this information from sources that are wholly unbiased. <laughs> I'm not going to say that at all. I'm just uh, throwing information at you. But Denmark is very, very proud of its pork and its milk products. And probably good, with good reason. But then, you know... What country would say, we've got the worst milk in the world. Don't buy our milk. It sucks. <laughs> Nobody's going to say that. Nobody at all. But it is what it is. Be proud of your country, wherever you live. Everybody should be proud of their countries. And if you're not, do something to make a change. Don't just sit there and whine about it. Do something. Well, now that we've gotten through the animal population, let's talk about arables. That would be like this wheat that I'm harvesting right now. I'm not going to get very much off of this field, but hopefully enough to at least keep our pigs going. Hopefully we meet the health and safety standards required of our Danish pigs. <laughs> um, or of our pigs, anyway. We're only in Scandinavia. I didn't say we were in Denmark. Anyway... Um, apparently the primary crops that they grow in Denmark are 
barley, wheat, rye, and oats. Now, barley is generally used for malt. A lot of that's used for brewing, so, you know, um, it could also be used to make whiskey or rye. Rye whiskey, malted whiskey. I don't know. I don't know all that much about hard liquors, but I definitely know barley is made for or used for beer. So they turn the wheat and rye into flour. You know, everybody knows white bread. Everybody knows rye bread. And then the oats are generally used to produce breakfast cereals. They also do a lot of potatoes and canola. So canola, potatoes, all of our standard arables, really. And then, yeah, canola and potatoes. So that gives us a lot of options here on Nico's little farm. Let's see how that turns out for us. Um, and they do, in southern Denmark at least, they do quite a bit of sugar beet production. So we don't have much in the way of limitations. I think we could even get away with sunflowers. I mean, sunflowers and canola, they're, they're kind of similar, but very different. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, and of course, you know, they do have the proverbial fruit trees, um, different types of berries, different types of vegetables, tomatoes. I mean, who doesn't grow tomatoes? Come on. Is there anywhere in the world that doesn't grow tomatoes? Seriously? And this is coming from a guy who doesn't even like tomatoes. I know. Cardinal sin, right? Harv doesn't like tomatoes. Nope, I don't. I don't like fresh tomatoes. You give me anything made out of uh, tomatoes, and I will be happy to chow down on it. But I don't want a slab of raw tomato. No thanks. Spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce, turn it into a sauce. I'm all about it. Add some spices, kick it up a notch, but no raw tomato. No thank you. None for me. Well, that takes care of our wheat. Look at all of that straw. Look at all that straw. Now, that leads me to uh, something I've been thinking about. First thing, uh, one more little factoid about Denmark is that one third of the straw produced in Denmark is used in bioenergy. So most of the straw well, no, one third of the straw they produce goes to the biogas plant to produce energy. I don't know. I find that pretty interesting. Now, I've got a lot of straw that I'm going to need to collect. I'm not going to waste it. Can't afford to waste it. Not on this farm anyway. And man, we're going to only end up with about 40,000 liters of wheat off of this big, big field. That is poor production right there. Nico, you're killing me, brother absolutely killing me it is what it is that's, that's all I can say it is what it is that is a good sized trailer at least I mean if we had had this field fully productive I would have filled this trailer and then some anyway because we're raising the pigs I could give this straw to the pigs they could be cranking out manure, but I'm not going to do that. I think in the long run, it's going to be better for me to sell off the straw. I know there are buyers for it. Unfortunately, not the biogas plant. They might actually pay a little bit better. You know, I might end up having to take this tree out because... That's going to be a little bit snug, especially with this big old honking trailer. Can I sneak it through there? Barely, but I can. I need to get this wheat to these pigs. There we go. I don't know how much they're going to take, but this will at least get them fed partially. It will help with their food supply. And man, <laughs> Are they going to take it all? That's 20,000 liters already. 30,000 liters to the pigs. 
And yes, they took every bit of the wheat that I just produced off of that field. Now on the plus side, that will at least in part keep them going for, well, if they were completely full of food, which I don't believe they are. I know they're not because there's three other food groups they need. That would keep them going for another 10 days. And we'll put this right back where we found it. Put this back where we found it. Grab the loading wagon, because I know there's a small loading wagon over here somewhere. Yep. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of loading wagon action here. I've got three fields that I need to pick up. I think I'm going to start with the straw, because I need to bring the harvester back over anyway. But I'm not going to give the straw to the pigs. We need to bring in every penny that we can. Literally every penny that we can. So the straw is just going to be sold. At least in the beginning, I'll just let the pigs make slurry. And uh, it shouldn't hit them too bad. Here's hoping. You know something else that kid doesn't have? I just realized that I haven't seen is any kind of an animal trailer and why do you not have an animal trailer when you've got pigs why do you not have an animal trailer when you've got pigs because that's the whole point you have to haul the pigs to market I, I mean okay what he's thinking is probably he'll just have the animal dealer come and pick up the pigs that's costly we can't afford that expense oh man all right, well, I'll sort that out too. <laughs> Clearly, I will sort that out also. Anyway, I've got a whole lot of forage wagon collecting to do. A lot of running around town to do with my picked up stuff. Because, frankly, I'm not going to leave it sit again. Money needs to be coming in that's the key here get the money in so with all of that said welcome to our first day in Scandinavia on Nico's farm I'm gonna kill that kid <laughs> before this is all done I'm gonna kill that kid anyway I hope you enjoyed it learned a little something about Denmark today if you did Please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. As always, I very much appreciate you coming along for the ride. And until next time, take care.